Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the Lunch and Learn today. Um, my name is Courtney Fisher. I am the lead fitness trainer over at the Wellness Center. And I'm going to talk kind of about my fitness journey and my weight loss journey that I um, have overcome for myself. And this first picture that I want to show you is kind of where I started and kind of where I am now. Um, on the one picture, I was roughly 220 pounds. And um, it was after I had, of course, some children and just normal lifestyle type of things, um, stressors, all that kind of stuff. So I, of course, used to be a stress eater. Now when I'm stressed, I don't eat. Um, but it's just one of those things where as I got to a point in my life where I needed to make some type of change, so I really had to, to focus on me. So in doing that, I started with my weight loss exercise journey. Um, first thing I wanna do is I wanna ask you guys some questions. How many of you guys in here have a gym membership? How many of you guys attend a fitness class? Track your food intake? Make excuses, right, yep. Or set attainable goals. So those are a lot of the things that um, I did not do in the beginning and I slowly, of course, had to add them in. I did not do them all at once. Um, I had to make little baby steps in order to get where I am today. Um, I started this journey back in 2010. Um, so it wasn't something that happened overnight. It, of course, was several years of making changes, falling back a little bit, making changes, readjusting to get where I am today. Um, the first thing is that I started with is I started with my um, exercising or my fitness. Uh, and biggest thing is, is I, didn't want to, I didn't do it alone. I had somebody there um, that helped me, that I was accountable, that helped me be accountable for my, my exercises. And um, I was lucky enough to start, whereas my husband works at North Star and they have a, they have a fitness center at North Star. And um, free to all their employees, spouses, and families. And I got a trainer there that they staff that really got me into exercising and working out. Plus they do a lot of challenges. so. When they started including their spouses on their challenges, I went in there to work out one day, and um, the trainer and I just clicked really well. She went, you know, asked me what my goals were, what I was looking for, and at that point in time, it was just like, I don't know, I'm just supposed to be here. My husband told me I had to come, but he's a fitness center. Um, and so she just really took the time to invest in me and get me to realize how important it is to make changes to exercise on a regular basis, um, to be able to not only lose weight, but to maintain it and keep it up. Um, so when I say you don't have to do it alone, I um, attend a lot of different things with um, groups of people that we have a lot of the same goals now, a lot of the same failures. Um, we all came from different backgrounds, but um, some of us go from, like some of these pictures are where we went to, Niagara Falls and did a, a race and some of us just walked, some of them ran, but we stayed as a group at, at the end and made sure that everybody finished the finish line. Um, cheering them on, doing that kind of stuff and now too there's a lot of apps out there where they'll allow you to track as your racers are racing so we would you know send little keep it going you know that bears chasing you little comments here and there. Um, and then the middle picture here is actually when I was on an all-inclusive vacation, I made sure that I still exercised when I was on vacation. Never used to do that, but that was something that um, I made a change, and this was the first vacation I lost weight on at an all-inclusive resort versus gain weight. And normally I come back like 10 pounds every year, 15 pounds every year. So that was a huge goal. Um, and they had an um, instructor that taught the, this class that I really loved. Um, it was TRX, so they're, they're resistance bands on, um, that are connected to the wall and it's all body weight type of stuff that we did, but she just made it fun. Even in 90 degree weather, dripping sweat, which I don't like to sweat, I even took pictures of sweat rolling down my leg, you know, so, um, but it was just, I would have never liked that before, but it was something that if you enjoy it, you're going to want to do it. Uh, some of the benefits of 
So you don't want to go to a gym or attending a fitness class that you're going to meet new people. Those people then become our, our accountability partners, our people that are going to make sure that we're continuing to come back, especially if you find a good group of people to do that. Um, that was one thing when I then got into the, the fitness and I started teaching fitness classes, I always made sure that the people, my participants that came, you know, if they were going to make a class, I was, did, was not, I did not hesitate to say, well, why weren't you here yesterday? Did you not wake up? You know, or so, you know, or they would be calling each other on the phone. Like we became really good um, close friends. With the gym, you have a lot of different uh, exercise equipment that you might not be able to have at home. Um, so you can utilize some of that. A lot of it, though, when people go into a gym, and I was the same way, you're overwhelmed. Like, where am I going to start? You know, and everything's so electronic now too that you know, how do I get this machine to start? I asked a lot of questions in the beginning. Definitely. Um, made myself aware of what I felt comfortable doing and what I didn't feel comfortable doing, um, and then worked my way up. Like I said, a variety of fitness classes, so you've got to find a fitness class that works for you. I found one where it was a little bit more intense than um, some people might enjoy, but it felt like it pushed me more versus going to a class where, yeah, I could accomplish every exercise, but I didn't really have the extra push. And for me, I really needed that push um, to, to be able to lose some of that weight that I wanted to lose. Um, helps improve our health, which is the overall reason why most of us, you know, want to join a gym or attend a fitness class, um, burning those calories and, and that fat. Um, with that, being able to exercise alone um, will burn some of those calories back, but then also you have to, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about diet. You have to make some changes there. Um, one of the things that I realized is that if I just exercise and didn't change my diet, yeah, I could lose some of the weight, but I didn't get to my goals where I wanted to be because I wasn't accommodating both. And then the um, biggest thing for me was the focus and dedication. Um, because if you're not dedicated and don't want it for yourself, you have to want it in you to be able to, to reach some of these goals. So that dedication was huge. We make all kinds of excuses, which we'll talk about as well. Um, but you know, to sit down and I finally was like, I have to do this for myself. I'm not gonna give up this time, because we do. We will start something and if it doesn't go just the right way, then we're like, all right, I'm done. It's not working. And then self-discovery, a lot of things that I found out about myself that I never thought I was gonna be able to do. Um, was some of the lifting that I do now. Uh, I before I could never do a push-up. Now I can do a lot. I can do several push-ups. Even last year when I was doing some of my um, strength training and we did a challenge at North Star, I did over 45 push-ups, which is huge. Um, have not accomplished the whole pull-up quite yet. I can get there, but it's still a struggle for me. Um, and then the other thing that, one of the things that I did was I benched more than what I weigh, which was huge as well. So, I mean, just little things like that that you kind of discover and find out about yourselves, and then those just make me push even more. Um, and now I have different seasons, I would say, my more of a little bit more of a walking strength training season versus in the summertime we like to cut a little bit. Um, so those are things that I've kind of really focused on and made sure that I'm aware of what I'm doing. Um, like I said, diet was a huge thing. So after I did the exercise, got into a routine of making sure I'm going to the gym on a regular basis, um, trying to stop making those excuses, I then changed my diet. I didn't do it all at once because I knew if I did it all at once and I had too many changes in my life, I was going to fail. Um, so once I decided that I was at a good point in my exercise that I wasn't going to give up on that anymore, I decided to change my, my, uh, my diet. Like it says here, you can't out exercise a bad diet. So if you are eating, you know, 1,400 calories, but it's all junk, the amount of exercise and the amount of um, activity you have to do to get that calorie deficit is way more than if you just eat a healthy diet. Um, so one of the things that I started doing is I started drinking a lot more water a day. I always carry my cup around with me. Um, and I have found out that I can't just do a bottle of water, especially room temperature water. 
Um, I have to have my stainless steel straw with ice because it goes down so much smoother, I think. I don't know why, but it does. Um, so those are just things that I have found, whereas I have friends that they'll just pick up a bottle of water that's from Jeff and be able to chug it, no problem. I struggle with that, so this is something that I had to find for myself. Um, I went from eating three normal sized meals to four to six smaller meals with lots of protein and green vegetables is typically what I eat. Um, one of the first changes that I did was I went from a normal sized plate to a side plate. I didn't change necessarily what I was eating, I just made those, more, those portions smaller. Now I just, like I said, that now I go to mainly proteins and green, and green vegetables. Um, not that I don't cheat because I'm at a point now that I feel like I can have a little bit more cheat days, but there's certain things that I do so I can cheat. Um, hardest thing for, for us, especially with, we have four kids, we're out and about, my kids all play sports. There are a lot of evenings that I'm not home. In the fall, when school goes back in session, I have one playing volleyball, I have one playing football, and I have one playing soccer. I am at some type of field six days a week, if not seven. So um, we stopped doing any fast food. Um, my kids still get to, but I don't. I normally will go to, this, go to the fast food restaurant, but I don't get it. I pack my own food, um, do a lot of food prepping on a Saturday or Sunday when I have some time. Um, I don't have a problem eating a lot of the same things over and over again. My kids struggle with that, um, but they're a lot more active than I am, so they can you know, handle that a little bit more. But the biggest thing that I have noticed that if I cut my fast food out, I'm not getting all those extra calories because when you go out to eat, those portions are huge. Um, so if we do go out to eat, we skip fast food, but if I'm going to sit down in a restaurant, my husband and I share meals. Um, not mainly because of cost, it's just more because they are so huge. And I, I can't eat that much, and so if my husband will split it with me, then it helps him control how much he's eating as well, because he could eat that whole plate. Whereas I'm trying to help him, and he helps me because I don't want to eat that plate. Um, the next thing that I stopped was stop drinking any type of soda um, or sugary type of drinks. We don't even have any type of soda in the house. Um, I just mainly drink water. I will do my protein shakes because I have to sometimes supplement with um, a protein drink versus food just because of um, I get too full. So I, and with some of the strength training that I do, I have to make sure I get plenty of my protein in my um, body. But stopping any type of um, sugar drinks or soda really helped me in not having those cravings. And now I don't, I mean, like if I have a pop, I'm lucky if I can even finish a can because it's just, it's just something different. And I do do some carbonation type of water, but a lot of it is it's just, it, it, I can't even handle that um, taste or the texture anymore. Um, big thing too that we had to stop doing, I had to stop doing is I had to stop doing the late night snacking. A lot of times, you know, we sit down and watch TV, we eat popcorn, we have ice cream. Um, I had to, after a certain time, I had to make sure that I was not eating anything. So for me, I go to bed quite early because I get up early in the morning. Um, I'm in bed by 9 p.m. So I try to stop eating um, by 6.30 at the latest. So if we have not eaten our meal by 6.30, I'm typically not eating or eating celery and peanut butter or something like very basic, I'm not eating chicken, I'm not eating um, a big huge salad or anything, I'm just eating something very small to tide me over. I drink a lot more water then because that will fill me up and then I, you know, so I can not overeat before I go to bed. Um, like I said, less than the sugar intake. So with that, I did a um, sugar detox, um, kind of in the middle of my weight loss journey just because I kind of was at a standpoint. Um, I was struggling really with dropping a few more pounds. And um, so I had to you know, make some type of adjustment because if we stay in the same routine long term, of course, your body's just gonna adapt to it. Um, so I did this eight week sugar detox and it was very tough because I had to take even natural sugars out of my diet. Um, so I couldn't have a lot of my fruits and vegetables that I would normally eat on a regular basis. Um, Got to a lot of, that's kind of how I do a lot of the just protein and greens versus like I couldn't have my red peppers, I couldn't have my berries, my, my grapes, my apples, that kind of stuff. Um, 
there was a week period that I had withdrawals, of course, like anybody. Um, I was very hangry, you know. My kids didn't like me very well. Um, but basically, in the, in the eight-week process, um, the book was called I Quit Sugar by Sarah Williams. And the nice thing about the book is it gave you plenty of recipes to use, but also, like, each chapter was a different week. So, like, the first week, you just kind of acknowledge what you're eating, what you're putting into your body. Second week, you start lessening them. Weeks three, four, and five, you go cold turkey and don't have any of those, and then you slowly add some of your fruits and healthy vegetables back in. Um, one of the things that I really noticed with that was I lost a lot of appetite, so I was not hungry by the end of week four. Um, so I had to make sure I ate, and I always carried small things with me um, just because I didn't have that appetite, so I didn't want to feel sick by overeating. Um, and then the other thing is, is I went from a very sweet wine drinker to a very dry wine drinker because of the sugar. Anything really sweet, I just, I couldn't handle. Um, so that was something that, like I said, I just, I, that's something I had to do just because I needed to get over that plateau. And, um, and that process, it, it helped me maintain and realize that, you know, some of these foods that I was eating were still affecting and causing me not to get over the, some of the weight loss. And a big one, which was part of the this, this sugar detox, is I had to lessen my alcohol intake. Not that I was drinking a bottle of wine a night or drinking all the time, but I went months without drinking any alcohol, um, just because those are, I mean, they're kind of wasted calories, right? So even if you're getting that light beer or doing, um, you know, your diets with some type of um, added in it, you're still getting some of those calories. So that was one thing that I had, I had to lessen out of my diet, um, especially like on the weekends when we go out with our friends, because when you do drink, a lot of times you want to snack. Um, so that was one of the things that I had to do. And now when I do drink, a lot of times it's water and vodka and I add a little bit of flavoring. Um, and that's one of the things that I did on the last vacation. I went with my husband and I took a whole bag of meals with us on vacation. And by the time that we were down there, the rest of the bar, all the, all the people that we met were doing the same thing, you know, we were sharing with them. Um, but that got me my water, my hydration, and I still was able to, you know, to drink some. Um, one of the other things that I did was I did track a lot of my food intake because if you're tracking it, if you're actually looking at how many calories the cookie that you're eating is going to be, you kind of have to think about, is it really worth it? Is, you know, is this cookie really worth me having to not eat something, you know, that's more protein-based down the road? Um, so that was a huge thing for me. When I started doing that, I tried to make every excuse in the book, this cookie, you know, I really want this cookie, I really want this candy bar. Um, so then for me, I had to go on to the point where if I wanted that cookie, I had to go do 15 burpees. Who wants to do a burpee? <laughs> that cookie was not worth it for me. So, I mean, I had, I had to start doing stuff like that, you know? So it was just like, um, until I got to the point, like I said, now that I want to maintain, I can do a little bit of those things, but I still have to watch it because if I do it on a regular basis, then my body's gonna get back into the routine of having those cheat things, and then I'm gonna, you know, slowly work my way backwards. Um, so that's where I have, where I have cheat meals, I don't have my cheat days. So if I, once I have a cheat meal, it's a meal and that's it, or it's a, it's a snack and that's it. Um, I don't go all day having a whole cheat day, um, which is something that sometimes is really, is really tough on people. I do, I typically, a couple times a week, will have some cheat meals and um, kind of keep the things in perspective because I'm the type of person that is, I want to be able to still love and enjoy my life. I don't want to have to, you know, sit by the book and only eat these certain things. Um, my kids still eat all the kinds of foods that I used to love and enjoy. Um, so I don't want to have to cheat myself out of it, so I allow myself to have those things. Now, when I was in a lot of my cutting process, I did not, which was tough. Um, but that's where a lot of the, the focus and dedication came into, like, what was my goal? What did I want to achieve? So if I wanted to achieve those things, I had to realize that I had to give some things up, you know? Um, so I'm gonna talk about a little bit about excuses. We all have these excuses, right? The biggest excuse that most of us have is, I don't have time. I use that a lot. Like I said, four kids, I had two 
that are a year and a day apart. Um, and then I had, and with that, I had older ones that were active in sports. So, because our, kid, our kids range, there's like 12 years in between the kids. So, I had one going to the sporting event, and I have two kids that I'm driving along in the car with me, carrying a car seat, carrying one on the hip. Who has time to exercise? I had to make that time. Um, that's where I have found out that I have to work out in the morning. I used to do all my exercises before my kids would even get out of bed. Um, once my kids started school, I still continued with that routine. I'd get home, get the kids up, get them ready for school. Because that was the only time I had. Once they were in school, um, you know, that was my time to do stuff around the house because they weren't going to make a disaster because they were at school all day. Um, so you always, you always have the time, you just kind of have to schedule it. Um, a lot of people that I um, talk to, as I try to tell them, put it in your schedule like you would a work meeting, you would a ball game, you would any type of activity, put it in your schedule um, and stick to it. Once you stick to it and you get it, make it part of your routine, you know, there are going to be days that, yes, you're not going to feel the best and you might not, you know, go and exercise and stuff, but then you have to accommodate. That's when I would accommodate, okay, well, then I really have to watch my food today. Um, but make sure that you put the, the time into it. I'm too tired to exercise. We're all tired. No matter what, we're all tired. But when we do exercise, a lot of times, like for me, especially because, I, like I said, I do my exercises in the morning, it gives me energy for the day. Once I'm done and over with it, I feel great. Getting there is a different story. But once I'm there, um, it's just like refreshed and renewed, right? So that's why I can't exercise later in the evening because then I'm going to be wide awake all night long. Um, but the exercising just really gives us that, that little bit of energy, you know, that little bit of oomph. Um, I can't afford is one excuse. Um, for me, I really didn't have, that wasn't one of my excuses. Like I said, North Star, um, I was fortunate enough that my husband works at North Star and we have that. But there are so many things out there that you can do at home. Um, you can eat, I mean, even if it's just making sure you're walking three times a week around your neighborhood. Or I do a lot of um, exercises <coughs> next to my bed. I do a lot of my core work, a lot of my um, push-ups, plank holds, that kind of stuff right there. Um, in my bedroom, but there's also a lot of things out there where YouTube is huge, so there's a lot of different videos that you can watch, anywhere from a seven minute exercise to a 45 minute exercise. Um, so if you are crunched in time, there are things out there that you know, might be pretty intense, but just getting something in is better than nothing. Um, so the not being able to afford, there's so many free different things out there that you can utilize. Um, one of my favorite one is the fitness blenders that they have on YouTube. They have a lot of great different exercises from total body exercises to specific um, muscle groups. So that would be definitely something I would look up. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Anybody who starts this journey typically doesn't know what they're doing. Just like you know, when you start a new job, you don't know some of the, you know, you might you might have the education on it, but you don't know all the details going into it in the beginning, right? You're gonna learn as you go. And that's what I did. I ask a lot of questions. Um, I always want to, you know, gain that knowledge. I um, do a lot of people watching too when I was in the gym. So I'd see what somebody's doing, and then I would go talk to them, you know, and say, hey, you know, why are you, you know, what are you doing that exercise for, or you know, how did you come up with this, that kind of stuff. Or I did a lot of watching stuff um, online and just trying to figure out things for myself. Um, I don't like to exercise alone. I did not either. Um, so, like I said, I had a fitness trainer in North Star that helped me out, but then I also got a lot of friends that we would join fitness classes because that accountability is huge. Um, my husband and I have different types of fitness uh, routines. He's a runner, I'm not. I'm a strength, you know, I do more strength training type stuff, but we still make sure that we walk every night, you know, every couple nights, you know, type of thing, especially um, even if we're at a a game or something, we're making sure during halftime we're getting up and walking around, we're not just sitting down. Um, so those are some things that even though we don't have the same type of fitness um, exercise programs, we still try to do a lot of things <coughs> together just because it keeps us both accountable. Exercise is not fun. Never. <laughs> I, I do it on a regular basis and there's still days that I'm like, oh, do I have to do this? But I enjoy it. 
I get, you know, I get up and I still go and do it. And now it's my, it's part of my job. Um, never thought that I would ever be a fitness trainer, um, but it's something that I enjoy now. You know, just like I enjoy attending my kids' sporting events. You know, so it's one of those things that I do things that I enjoy doing exercise-wise, and skip the things that I don't enjoy. So you find those types of things. So like for me, like I said, I started with some of those fitness classes, really got me into it, and now. I have been doing a lot more of the strength training, the, um, the lifting of the weights versus doing some of the cardio stuff. So it's just something you gotta find to see what fits for you and what you really consider enjoyment for exercise. I don't want to sweat. It's a lot of us ladies, right? Um, so what, when in the beginning what I would do, and I'm not a huge sweater so I didn't have this problem a lot, but I just broke things down into smaller groups when I, when I did exercise, so I wasn't doing all 45 minutes in one chunk. I would do so many minutes in the morning, so many minutes in the afternoon, um, so I wasn't overworking myself and being totally exhausted. And then the big one, I will start tomorrow. Tomorrow is always going to be tomorrow, unless you make it today. So you have to get over that, whereas just like Monday is always going to be Monday, right? I mean, I'll start Monday, and then it's next Monday. Um, it's one of the things is you just gotta you just gotta go out and do it and and continue to do it and you know and stick with it have that dedication have that focus. Um, so I'm gonna hand out a paper here. I'm gonna get these pictures up real quick um, and talk a little bit about smart goals. So with this, this is one of the things that I want you guys to kind of. Um, Go over and kind of we'll ask some questions on how you can get to your actual goal. Um, the biggest thing is is being very specific on your goal. So you want to make sure that you list actions that are specific actions and not just, oh, I'm going to lose 40 pounds. How are you going to obtain those goals? How are you going to measure them? Um, so this is a, a worksheet that you can either complete here or you can take home, but to keep on using it and utilizing it through your whole entire process. So you may change this several times throughout your journey, um, but this is a good way to keep focused on reaching your goals. Did everybody get one? I'm sorry. So with the first one here, um, like I said, being specific, you want to make sure that you have your goals very clear and easy um, to understand and to be very specific on what you want to obtain. Um, and so like for me, like I said, my biggest thing was I wanted to initially lose weight. So I you know, selected a pound that I wanted to lose and I made sure that it was something that was not un unachievable, right? So I made sure that I made little small goals and kept on building on them. Now my goals are different. Now my goals are more my strength training type of goals. So how am I gonna increase my, my muscle mass? How am I gonna increase my strength? Um, so those are the things that, like I said, it would just change over time. Um, but you want to make sure that they're measurable. So with that, I'm going to lose one pound a week so you can reach your goal by the end of the time. Or <clears throat> you're going you're gonna to lose one pound a week, but how are you going to lose that one pound a week? What are you going to do to lose that? So you want to make sure that it is um, something that you can track and you can actually be reasonable and, up, and obtain it. So I'm going to try to lose one pound a week by doing 30 minutes of cardio, three days a week, and two days of strength training during the week for 20 minutes or whatever it is. Um, and how you're gonna find the time to make sure that you can get that into your schedule. And also, you know, who can you account, who can you rely on to make sure that you're getting these things done? Um, you wanna make sure that it is relevant. Uh, why do you wanna reach these goals? If you have your big why, then you're going to make sure that you um, try to re uh, 
to achieve them a little bit more because you have reasoning behind why you want to lose the weight. Are you want to lose the weight because you want to be more active with your kids or grandkids? Do you want to lose the weight just because you're having health issues? You know, what are those type of reasons? Why is it relevant for you to reach whatever this goal is? Um, and like I said, for me, the strength training is, um, I, want to, I want to lose some of my uh, body fat, gain some muscle mass. Um, I don't know that I would ever say that I would want to be one of those bodybuilders but I would love to be one of the strength builders. So one of the people that would go up on stage and do, you know, heavy deadlifts, or I don't want to be the one with the bikini on the stage and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, but my, you know, for, so for me, as I'm working on my strength training goals, you know, my long-term goal might be to eventually be in one of those competitions, but a strength training type of one. And then time bound. So what kind of date are you going to make this goal um, reachable? by, you gotta set an end date. If you don't have an end date, then it's always gonna be tomorrow. <laughs> you know, so um, what kind of time, and I always made sure that there, I didn't just say, oh, by the end of the year, then I said, okay, what am I gonna do by September? What am I gonna do by October? What am I gonna, you know, set little small goals step by step. And then here, um, it's Two pictures, basically the, the one on the far side is me when I was a size 18. Um, and then this last one was when my husband and I took the kids to the Bahamas in June and I wear a size two or a four now. Um, and my weight, like I said, I've lost about 80, about 80 pounds in the almost, what, nine years, something like that. Um, and it was an up down type of uh, routine for me. I took a lot of steps forward, a lot of steps back, um, but I kept on getting back on track. I mean, I had the point where I wasn't losing weight, so why am I doing this? And you get really down on yourself, but I made sure that I took into consideration that, you know, there are going to be times that we're going to have um, failures, there's going to be times that we're going to step backwards, you know, but you just always have to make sure that you try to, to continue to push forward and Look at that long-term goal of yours, and just know that you know you can get there. It's just a very, it, can, it might be a very challenging, tough journey. So, do I have any questions? Anything else you guys want me to explain? Yes, meal prep. Okay. Um, so for my meal prep, I typically try to take where I can make um, meals for the week. Um, biggest thing is I do a big grocery list. Um, I have the hardest thing in the beginning probably was finding what kind of recipes I wanted to use. Um, like I said, I can eat a lot of the same things over and over again. My family could not. A lot of times I was making something for myself and something for them. Now my kids have to eat what I eat, otherwise they don't eat. Um, <laughs> I mean, I add some things for them that I won't eat, but if I'm eating the majority of my meal, they have to eat. Um, but a lot of it was, it was hard finding the recipes. Once you once I found a recipe, I, I would always grade them once I got them. So whether if it was an A plus, you know, an A, a B, a C, whether I made it again or not. But I would take a weekend, um, do my grocery shopping, and then I'd meal prep right away when I got home with that food. Um, I do a lot of freezer meals and prep that way so then I can just pull something out, put it in a crock pot, or put it in pressure cooker, that kind of stuff. Um, and then I always made sure, like, so when I made dinner, I had enough to ha at least have lunch the next day um, or the next couple days. My hardest thing probably was breakfast in the morning. Um, I do a lot of eggs. Um, I do do some oatmeal and stuff now, but I make sure it's a low sugar type oatmeal or very plain oatmeal. Um, or I do a lot of protein shakes in the morning just because it's easy. Uh, but that was something that, you know, breakfast is hard to meal prep, right? Um, so I have a Tupperware container that I can do my eggs in the microwave if I want to do eggs. Uh, I do a lot of, Jamin always makes fun of me too because I eat a lot of breakfast food is really dinner food for me. So I mainly eat my dinner for breakfast. Um, so I eat a lot of leftovers even for breakfast. I eat a lot of, you know, my, my meats, chickens in the morning with, in the, you know, 
normal people would be like, no, I want a bowl of cereal. But I, I just said, it's just easier for me that way. So like I said, I have leftovers and then I normally will eat them for, for, for breakfast. Um, and then lunchtime typically too would be something that um, just easy to, to get to. So a lot of times I will do, uh, I do a lot of salami, I do a lot of cheese, like I said, I'll do a lot of um, vegetables, green vegetables. Um, I will do salad, but a lot of times for salad, once you add that dressing and everything on top of that, you're just adding those calories in. Um, but when I do that salad, I make sure I'm adding chickpeas or some type of protein on it, hard boiled eggs, and doing very little dressing. Um, and a lot of times I'll make some of them, I'll make my own type of dressing, or just use um, vinegar and stuff, and balsamic powder. But that takes time too. Meal prepping takes a lot of time. So that's why I said I, that's why I didn't start it all in one aspect. I slowly added different things to it, um, and I started with just portion control in the beginning. Because if I would have tried to meal prep in the beginning, there was no way I would have made it through that. <laughs> Anything else? Well, thank you guys all for coming. If you have any questions, you can always email me. Thank you.